Now, the whole issue of, uh, of the transgendered, I mean, I, I do think we have to handle this with sensitivity because you're speaking, I've, I've interviewed people who've gone through this, and frankly, some will break your heart. I mean, they, yes, they can be very confused, but they're in enormous pain as well. We've divided this segment into two. Uh, Margaret Somerville, who's a world-renowned ethicist, we'll chat to a bit later. Before then, I suppose, the lighter side of, of all this. And you have to be able to laugh at issues as well, for goodness sake. David Menzies, who has our, mo has our morning show, very funny guy, and he tends to, um, he does a bit of dressing up, all sorts, we're extremely worried about him. He went along to the Miss v Universe contest where there was a transgendered contestant. And, well, you take a look at this, please. Well, we're here at the fabulous St. Lawrence Centre for the Performing Arts, the venue for tonight's fantastic finale of the Miss Universe Canada pageant. Now, one lucky gal or guy is going to be taking the crown as Miss Universe Canada and will represent our country at Miss Universe for all the marbles. Now, the star of the story today is Jenna Talakova. Jenna was once a guy. Now Jenna is a she, and she is getting all the headlines and all the publicity, and you can just cut the excitement in the air. Will this be the year that a guy wins Miss Universe Canada? Let's find out at Miss Universe Canada final. There you are. Thank you. We have the press credentials and you can just feel the excitement in the air as we all wonder who's going to win Miss Universe Canada, a real woman or a modified woman? Let's find out. Well, the theatre is filling up with beauty pageant fans from the world over and you can just cut the excitement with a knife if you wanted to. Now, speaking of cutting with a knife, a lot of people are upset that a transgender contestant is in this. But we have to be loving and accepting of all, whether it's transgendered or transsexual or Transylvanian. All trans is good trans, except trans fats. If you eat trans fats, ladies, it puts a little on the labanza. And we gotta keep our figure nice and slim or we'll never be a Miss Universe Canada. Anyways, the competition's about to begin. Let's see what happens. That's an unbeatable combination, folks. A bikini and high heels. Two thumbs up and one other appendage. <laughs> Well, we're at intermission and Jenna has done the improbable. She's advanced to the top 12, a baker's dozen, if you will. You know, a little extra. Stay tuned, let's see how this turns out, folks. Mm. Now, ladies, we don't have enough trophies, so... Well, at precisely 10.45, the clock struck midnight for Jenna Talakova. Alas, her Cinderella story of her wish to become Miss Universe Canada came to an end. Cinderella or Cinderfella? No matter. Now, a lot of people said that the Jenna Talakova situation cast a shadow over this year's Miss Universe pageant, but according to Dennis Davila, the president of the, man, of the company that runs the Miss Universe Canada pageant, he said this was not so. Dennis said, this is Canada. We are diverse. We are a multicultural country. We have come from all walks of life. And this is the true Canada. So let it be known and let it be said right now that when it comes to Lady Menzoid, my Canada includes trannies. 
for Sun News Network. The, the problem is that David likes dressing up like that more than is absolutely necessary. But th th this is a serious issue, and I don't think I have the right to tell anyone they can't have surgery. I, mean, I think doctors can be doing better things than this, but they have a right to have this done. But am I then obliged legally, as I am now actually, certainly as, as a broadcaster, and, and in other contexts too, to accept someone as a, as a woman if they were born a man. Margaret Somerville is a, a world-renowned ethicist and academic, and she joins us from Montreal. It's a very difficult one to find a, a middle ground, isn't it, Margaret? Uh, yeah, although I think there's guidance that we can have. I mean, we start off that we mustn't be discriminatory. We mustn't wrongfully discriminate. And these people have a condition where they feel that they're really the opposite sex from what their biological sex is. And they make themselves as much like the opposite sex as possible through surgery. Um, I thought it was very interesting what your commentator said, that is this a real woman or a modified woman? And when I was thinking about this issue, the beauty pageant issue, I think that you probably find that very few of those women were un unmodified women, although they were born women. And so one of the things I was thinking about, well, we could have sort of equal treatment if we said n no woman who'd had any change in her, any sort of augmentation surgery, would be allowed to compete. But I'm sure that nobody would go along with that. I mean, people have breast implants, they have nose jobs, they have all of these things. So uh, I, I think that's the first thing we've got to look at. Uh, but I think there's a much deeper issue involved here, and that is this move towards what's called a genderless society, mm -hmm. that we won't have any uh, distinctions based on gender. And gender is different from sex. Sex is what you are biologically, and the vast majority of us are either a man or a woman, or there's a, there's a rare situation where you could be intersex. Uh, but then gender is what role you want to play. Do you want to be a female or do you want to be a male? And for most of us, our biological sex and our gender matches. But for transsexuals, that's not the case. And so then we have to say, well, how do we treat those people so that we are fair to them mm. and uh, also that in certain circumstances, I would argue, uh, we shouldn't treat them in the same way that we would treat somebody who is a, a biologically either male or female. I mean, one of the areas I've got into trouble with that is same-sex marriage yeah. because I think their biology matters because you've got children coming from that complementarity of that biology. Yes. Obviously, the context here is a beauty pageant and, and, and it's so colossally flippant because it does objectify women and, and there's a horrible irony here that someone who, who has surgery to say they're a woman then wants to be in a contest that objectifies women. And you're quite right. There's a, there's a whole a level of cosmetic surgery going on. But when it becomes more profound, and that is someone... Look, if someone feels they're in the wrong gender, I don't think a civilised society has any, any right to say you can't feel that way. But it's mm -hmm. when they say, then we demand to use a certain gym, a certain washroom, go to a certain place, then society is obliged to change its way and its manners and its reaction to accommodate that person. That's well, where I have a problem. Well, Michael, you know, the, uh, I know in Quebec and I guess elsewhere in Canada, that birth certificates are changed for people who convert to the other sex. And there's just a a proposal under consideration, I understand, in Ottawa, that they're going to eliminate what they call gender, but they're really talking about sex, from, the pass from our Canadian passports. And um, I, I think the, the issue comes up most in the context of the family. I think that when it's an individual, I think that individual can decide for themselves how they want to live their life. But when we're talking about societal norms and societal institutions, I think it's important that we still maintain that gender, that sex distinction. Mm -hmm. When it comes to me, this, this becomes rather exclusively medical, but certainly psychiatry and psychology, and to an extent surgery too, is under the whim of fashion. There are people who may feel they're in the wrong gender, but there is, any, is there any way to, to, to prove that in a tangible and an absolute manner, to prove that... I mean, surely not. I mean, people who are born with, with both genders is something different. That's physiological. These are people who feel there's something different. Yes, but psychology and what we feel is real too. And I think it's a little bit like pain. I mean, 
we used to say that we would judge whether a person was in pain and then we'd treat them if we thought they were. That's completely the wrong approach mm. now. What we do now is we say, if you tell me you're in pain, we'll do the best we can to treat your pain. And I think that because I've spoken to these people, as you mentioned at the beginning, mm. that, you know, they have some heart wrenching stories and they really are, I think, in psychological pain. I think one of the questions is how well the reconstruction surgery works in curing that psychological pain. I know at one stage Johns Hopkins Hospital, which was the hospital that uh, pioneered this kind of surgery, they stopped the surgery because they didn't think it was effective to deal with that psychological pain. But it's still being done. I mean, I guess it more frequently, possibly, although I don't know the statistics on it. Mm. But you know far better than I do the, the, the influence of socialization and so on. There are people who I, I remember interviewing a, a someone who he'd been married, he had children, he, he was a rock musician. With all due respect to him, he wasn't a very attractive man. And, and as he was going through the, the change, I mean, well, we won't get into that, but th this, this was, it was visceral. I mean, he, he was going through absolute agony. But I've interviewed others who, because of the influence of maybe a parent or people around them, they feel they're in the wrong gender. It is merely a feeling. The, there may be some pain, but the pain can be addressed through psychiatry. Uh, Michael, I don't know. I don't think either you nor I are experts on that. I think we have to listen to the people who say that this is the best way forward. I mean, probably a lot of these people would rather they didn't have this condition. But if this is the best way to address it, I don't have a problem with it for the individual concerned. I do have a problem when we start to say it doesn't matter to societal norms and societal institutions whether you're a man or a woman. And I'm quite prepared to treat transsexuals as the sex they convert to. But I still think it matters whether we, whether what we base our values and norms on. And I think the, this complementarity of the two sexes is very important with respect to children. It's important with respect, therefore, with respect to marriage. And it's important to society. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I agree. You know I agree with that. The individuals who feel confused about their, their, their gender I believe, are very different now from the campaign around them. And part of the campaign around them is, I believe, trying to destroy the idea of, of different gender. Yeah, it is. That's, that's exactly what's happening. This comes from this idea that uh, what should be our predominant values are, first of all, individual autonomy and choice. Choice is given as the priority value. And you see here what you're looking at is your cho uh, choice as to what gender you want to be. And if you say, I want to be the opposite from my biological sex, OK, that's your choice. We'll try to help you to implement that. And also that, you know, that the values that count are simply a matter of personal preference. And that's an idea of moral relativism, that you can't say that anything's right or wrong. It all depends on what the individual chooses, what they want, and what they give priority to. And I, I don't agree with that. I, I think we do have some basic human realities that we need to protect and that those are the values that we on which we found our society. But I hasten to add, I'd include within those values no discrimination or no wrongful discrimination. But discrimination means equal treatment and equal treatment doesn't mean identical treatment. So I think we can still make differentiations and sometimes it is on the basis of sex. Mm -hmm. As always, a great pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. Thank you, it. Michael.